So today's session is about harmonic linearization. Before going into the details, let us have a quick look into the input output graphs from the transfer characteristics of a linear element as well as a non-linear element. Here two transfer characteristics are given, one for a linear element and another for a non-linear element. Let us see how the graphs are drawn. The graph is drawn in such a way that the red line of the transfer characteristics is moved down to get the y axis of the input and the blue line of the transfer characteristics is moved towards the right to get the y axis of the output. For both the input and output time axis is drawn as the x axis. As far as the transfer characteristics is concerned time is not shown. It is an implicit function. So let us start with the characteristics of a linear element. A sine wave is given as the input. Since the characteristics is a linear one, you can see that the output also will be a sine wave. That means the wave shape is maintained with the same frequency. Now coming towards the non-linear transfer characteristics. It can be seen that it is an on-off relay type. Here we can see that for positive values of input the output will be a positive constant and for negative values of input the output will be a negative constant which means if you give a sine wave as the input for all the positive values of the input the output will be a constant one with a value capital M and for all the negative values of the input you can see that the output will be a negative constant that is minus m. So if you look at the output of the nonlinear element we can see that it is no more a sine wave. It is a complex wave. According to the Fourier description of signals any complex signal can be thought as composed of a sinusoidal signal with a fundamental component of frequency say f and higher harmonic components. So this shows that as far as the nonlinear element is concerned the output will not be a sine wave for a sinusoidal input. Hence we can conclude that there will be higher harmonic frequency components in the output of a nonlinear element. So in short for a linear system, if a sinusoidal signal of frequency f is given as the input, the output will be a sinusoidal signal of frequency f. The slope is a major factor in determining the output. Here in the figure, you are given two different slope conditions. One slope is equal to 0.5 and another slope is equal to 2. In the first case, you can see that the output for an input sinusoid will have a smaller magnitude whereas in the second case the output for an input sinusoid will have a larger magnitude. Whereas in the case of nonlinear system if an input sinusoid of frequency f is given the output will be a complex signal. It can be thought as composed of a fundamental frequency f and higher harmonics. The frequency response analysis is based on describing a system by a complex valued function. But as far as linear systems are concerned this is possible whereas in the case of nonlinear systems this cannot be directly applied because transfer functions cannot be defined for nonlinear systems. Hence we use an approximate method called describing function. In describing function approach we consider only the component corresponding to the fundamental frequency in the complex signal at the output. We compare this component with the input signal. Thus describing function is defined as the ratio of the amplitude of the fundamental component of frequency in the output of a nonlinear device to the amplitude of the input sinusoidal signal. Now let us move to the describing function fundamentals. Here in the figure you are given a nonlinear closed loop system where capital N represents the nonlinear element, G1 of S and G2 of S represents the linear counterparts. 
here we assume that the nonlinear as well as the linear elements can be totally separated the reference is r is equal to 0 so we make two assumptions basically one g1 of s and g2 of s have low pass characteristics which means it will block the higher harmonic components second is the nonlinearity is a symmetrical one in the first slide you have seen that a nonlinear element is used which is an on off relay it is symmetrical about the x axis we have seen that as far as a nonlinear element is concerned when you give an input x the output y will have a number of frequency components in it so by the period description y can be thought as y0 plus a1 cos omega t plus b1 sin omega t plus a2 cos 2 omega t plus b2 sin 2 omega t plus etc. But since we assume that g1 of s and g2 of s have low pass characteristics, we can see that as the output passes through g2 of s and g1 of s, the higher harmonics can be eliminated. And since we assume that the nonlinearity is symmetrical, the average component also can be eliminated because y0 will be equal to 0. Thus, y can be thought as reduced to y is equal to a1 cos omega t plus b1 sin omega t. When you divide the equation y equal to a1 cos omega t plus b1 sin omega t by root of a1 square plus b1 square, we get a condition like this. Let us assume you have a triangle which is right angled in nature with b1 as the base and a1 as its altitude. In this case, sin phi is a1 by root of a1 square plus b1 square and cos phi is equal to b1 divided by root of a1 square plus b1 square. Also, tan phi is a1 by b1. This term sin phi and cos phi appears in the equation. This is nothing but sin omega t plus so, y will be root of a1 square plus b1 square into sin omega t plus phi. Hence, for the nonlinearity, when x is equal to capital X sin omega t, y is again a sine wave. The amplitude has changed with some phase shift. This is just because we have neglected all the higher harmonic components. This is basically harmonic linearization. Now, this acts as a linear system. Here we can easily find a1 and b1. So please keep in mind that if y is equal to a1 cos omega t plus b1 sin omega t equation is used, in the relation to find a1, this should be cos and this should be sin. If you use this as sin and this as cos, then this would be again sin and cos respectively. Hence, describing function kn of x is equal to y of x. Here, this shows that the output y is a function of x, which could be seen in the upcoming videos. So, describing function kn of x is equal to y of x by x. Here, we consider the ratio of the fundamental component of the frequency in the output, that is sin omega t. This is also sin omega t. And its component magnitude is root of a1 square plus b1 square. And as far as the input is concerned, it is capital X. And the phase shift is phi. So, if you write it in the complex form, it is b1 plus j a1 by capital X. In the polar form, Describing function would be kn of x is equal to root of a1 square plus b1 square by capital X angle pi. Thank you.